This is John Kohler with DiscountJuicers.com. Today I have another exciting episode for you. What we're going to do today is show you how to dehydrate some common fruits and vegetables and even a fungus. Yes, that's the mushrooms. So many people may purchase a dehydrator such as an Excalibur dehydrator is what I have right next to me. And that's a dehydrator that I recommend for a few reasons. Number one, it has rear airflow. So a rear airflow dehydrator means that the heat source is at the, at the back and it blows air across the whole trays, which means you're gonna get more even drying than the uh, heat source being at the bottom, much like the round dehydrator. Some heat sources are at the bottom and the heat goes up, but the problem is the heat does rise, but as the items on the bottom trays get dehydrated, it lets off the moisture, which then re-moisturizes the top trays. The other thing you'll notice on the dehydrators that have the heat source at the bottom, by the time you get to the top of the dehydrator, the temperature has a pretty big fluctuation. On the Excalibur, because it is going from the back across the trays, it's a much more constant and even drying. In addition, a lot of the round dehydrators, you know, you don't have as much square footage. There's not as much square footage in a circle as there is in a square. In addition, the main feature I like the Excalibur for is because it has a built-in thermostat. So what that means is that just like your house heater on your wall at home in the wintertime, you know, you want to crank it up a little bit. In the summertime, you maybe want to turn the AC on. So it stays in a, you know, a range that you feel comfortable with. Maybe it's 65, maybe it's 70 degrees or whatever it is. You know, most uh, round dehydrators, you just plug it in and it's at whatever temperature it is. So imagine if you came home every day and it was always 90 degrees. That's just too hot. With the Excalibur dehydrator, you can set the temperature to the temperature you want anywhere from 85 degrees on the low end up to 155 degrees. For some foods like beef jerky and other jerkies, you want to put it up to the high end. And for somebody into living in raw foods, you definitely want to keep it on the low end. I'd probably set the Excalibur to about 105 degrees to keep all the enzymes and the most nutrition in the food. So before I get into a uh, showing you how to process the fruits and vegetables and shrooms properly, I want to share with you more about the Excalibur dehydrator. Every Excalibur dehydrator comes with a dehydration guide. And this is the little uh, instruction manual, the booklet. It gives a few recipes and it tells you how to dehydrate things from jerkies, fruit rolls, fruit leathers, and how to properly process the vegetables. You know, how to wash them and then how to, you know, cut them and how long they're going to take to dry. Now, I did want to talk about the drying time. The drying time that it can take to dehydrate things can vary widely. Anywhere from, you know, as short as three hours on up to 24 hours. It depends on a few things. Number one, your ambient temperature and the humidity level where you live. For example, in Hawaii where it's more humid or the East Coast in the summertime where it's really humid, it's going to take longer to dehydrate something than if you're in Las Vegas where there's actually pretty much no humidity. Another reason which may change your dehydration time is the temperature. So if you're into living in raw foods and you want to do it at a low temperature, it's going to take a longer period of time than if you crank it up to full blast and then it's going to take a shorter amount of time. The compromise there is maybe some of the nutrition will be lost if you crank it up to a higher temperature. So to preserve the most nutrition, you probably want to do it at a lower temperature. So another thing that will influence dehydration time is the item you're dehydrating. So for example, if we're going to dehydrate some kale or some herbs or some flowers, you know, there's not a lot of moisture content in these leaves to begin with. So the dehydrator will be able to effectively uh, evaporate off the moisture quicker and sooner rather than, you know, something like a banana or even an orange. Yes, you could even dehydrate oranges. It's actually amazing. Oranges are really liquid as we know, and it, oranges are going to take longer than something like kale. And the final thing that I want to talk about that will influence dehydration time is how you prepare the produce. So for example, if we try to put a whole apple in there, well, number one, that's not going to work. So, I mean, that's the extreme example. The other extreme example is we take a paper thin slice. The paper thin slice doesn't have a lot of water content in there. There's a lot more surface area so that the water can be evaporated off of. So in general, the thinner the slice, the shorter amount of time it takes, the fatter or bigger the slice, the longer amount of time it takes. For all the reasons I just listed, you know, dehydration times are not set in stone. John, 
I dehydrated apples and the book says 12 hours and it's been 14 and it's not done yet. Well, hey, maybe you're at a low temperature. Maybe you cut them too thick. Maybe you live in Hawaii where it's really humid. There's, you know, so many different factors that can play into it. So the smartest thing to do, you know what, is learn by doing. I do many things in life by learn by doing. And basically you're going to just cut things up, put it in there, and you're going to open up the dehydrator every once in a while and check to see when it's to the level of dryness that you desire. That's the other thing that's really nice about dehydrators. You know, if you want to take things out when they're a little bit moist, you can definitely do that. But if they're still moist and there's a certain percentage of moisture left in the product, then it's going to spoil quicker. So if you want to take some percentage of moisture out, you can do that. I would recommend you take it out of the dehydrator and then put it right in your fridge and then use it within a few days. Now, if you get the moisture level down more so it's actually crispy, you've removed a lot of the moisture and then it's more shelf stable. I like to store all my dehydrated goods in something like a glass mason jar with a lid that's sealed really tight. If you want to get more extreme on the saving the items you dehydrate, you can put it in a glass mason jar with a um, food saver, a vacuum sealer jar attachment to suck out all the air. And I mean, that'll easily save for a year or maybe more depending on the produce item or the item you're dehydrating. So if you are new into purchasing a dehydrator and don't yet own one, I would also encourage you to get the Excalibur 3500 or 3900 series of dehydrators. Those models when purchased from discountjuicers.com currently include this book, which uh, only certain models include. This is a Preserve It Naturally book. This is the complete guide to food dehydration. There is about 200 pages in this book that will basically give you um, full on recipes on how to prepare all these dehydrated things, dehydrated shrimp, how to dehydrate summer squash, um, you know, basically step-by-step -step guides if you want to do it precisely. <laughs> this will totally give you all the information you need to dehydrate pretty much everything and they have nice full color pictures. This is one really nice book. So this book is normally like a $25 value but for a limited time we are including it with the 3500 and the 3900 model dehydrators. So that's the book. So next, let's go ahead and get into the dehydration and how to do it. It's very simple, very easy. Uh, if you are going to do it with your children, I would definitely supervise them because in many cases, you will be using a knife to cut up the produce items to dehydrate. Once again, you can't put in whole apples. It's not going to work or whole pretty much anything. Maybe the mushrooms we could kind of do, but I wouldn't recommend it. It's always best if things are sliced up, once again, as thin as possible because that's going to reduce your dehydration time. So let's go ahead and take off this cover here and what I like to do is usually take out like one tray that I'm working with I'll have that right next to me and I'll be able to basically like it's like you're cutting a deck of cards right you ever cut a deck of cards and then you you uh, hand out the cards to the people if you're playing poker we're gonna cut up you know not a deck of cards but an apple for example and then put that on the tray you know um, barely touching each other and it's gonna dehydrate all the water off so first, I guess we'll start with one of the favorite things to uh, dehydrate, that's bananas. Now, if you go to the health food store, you might often you know, buy banana chips. Now, banana chips, they're not dehydrated. I'm sorry to bust your bubble. They're actually fried. And how do I know this? You could do this easy test that, uh, that I showed this girl one time. This girl I was hanging out with, she's like, man, I eat a lot of those banana chips. They're raw and they're good. I'm like, they're not raw. So raw would be heated not above 118 degrees. And I'm like, those are fried. And I'm like, she's like, no, they're not. And like, you know, sometimes people don't believe me, but I'm usually fairly accurate. So I'm like, okay, watch this. I took a napkin and I took the napkin and put it in my hand. And then I took some banana chips out of the bulk bin at the health food store, put it in there and crushed it all up. And then after crushing it up, I poured the banana chips off and we looked at the napkin and guess what? There's oil stains on the napkin because they fry them up. So they're not quite as healthy as they could be if you made them yourself at home. So it's very simple. The way to do that is you're going to take a banana and you don't want it too ripe because it'll be too mushy and not firm enough for slicing. You want it, you know, about like this actually. This is a pretty good uh, way to do it. And you're going to first peel the banana. I always like to peel the banana from the bottom. It's a little bit easier than trying to break the top off. And then we're going to take that out of the peel. And next, you're just going to take your knife. And once again, it's very important to slice them into a nice sized um, slices so it will dehydrate pretty quick. And we're just going to go down the line and slice it up. 
All right, so now we have all our banana slices, then we're just gonna take them one by one and lay them on our dehydrator. You could do it a little bit thicker or a little bit thinner. Some people like to slice the banana like the lengthways, like right down the middle. I'd probably do about at least uh, you know two slices down the middle. So you could have like half the bananas. But once again, if you do it that way, they will take longer to dehydrate. So you can see where I like to make rows whenever I'm dehydrating. So like I just make one row all the way down, then I'll make a next row and a next row until I have the tray full. To speed up this process, you can use a mandolin slicer on some produce items. I find that that doesn't tend to really work too well on bananas because bananas are actually kind of soft. But actually the next banana that we're gonna process, I'll show you what I use to make it much simpler to slice them up. All right, so that got us about uh, two rows of bananas. Next, let's go ahead and take one more banana. Hey, have you ever eaten 30 bananas a day? <laughs> All right, peel it from the bottom. Once again, no problem. And we're gonna put that out there. Now that we got our banana out of the peel, I'm gonna demonstrate the handy dandy banana slicer. This may be available at a houseware sh uh, store near you. This is simply a banana slicer. You put it on the banana, press down, and it'll slice your banana on all, all the pieces. There we go. We'll just put it on there and check it out. Slice down, makes nice uniform pieces really simply and easily. Then it's kind of stuck in there, and then I like to just take this up and just like, look, look at that, push these pieces down one piece at a time. This actually goes really fast, actually, much easier than actually using the knife. So the, uh, the banana slicer, look at that, nice and simple. They're already on the tray and we just need to kind of arrange them on the tray. Now this made a little bit fatter slices than the ones that I did manually. So you know what, that's fine. Whatever size you want, you just want it definitely, you know, not too tall because you have about three quarters of an inch between the trays and if you're cutting things at three quarters of an inch, that's definitely too much. So I'd definitely say for most things, you want it for sure a half inch or less. Preferably less, I would recommend you um, cut most things. About a quarter of an inch is about the right size. So that's how you dehydrate bananas. You cut them up, put them on the tray. Once again, if you notice, I am using the mesh sheets. There are some optional non-stick sheets that I don't necessarily recommend to dehydrate anything on especially if it's not runny, gooey, or liquid. You always want to dehydrate on the mesh sheets, which are included with the dehydrator. The uh, non-stick sheets are additional. The non-stick sheets are used for something like fruit roll-ups when you would actually blend the bananas and then pour the mixture onto the sheet, and that's usually used for kids. Sometimes if you want to make something like flax crackers or other kind of crackers, the non-stick sheets may also come in handy. So you can see here we have about two-thirds of the tray with bananas, and that was only two bananas. So probably about six bananas would fill up your whole tray. We're gonna go ahead and slide those in the dehydrator. Now you can mix things on the same tray. So I could put bananas, oranges, and apples all on the same tray. But you know what, I'm just gonna separate out the trays just to make it a little bit easier. Uh, next, we're gonna process the apples. And apples, once again, it's really simple and really easy to dehydrate apples. Same thing happens, you're gonna to want to uh, slice the apple up uh, you can slice the apple up and actually dehydrate the seeds and the core and pick out the seeds. But what I like to do is I like to actually uh, use an apple core to core the apples. Now this is a nice apple core. It's made by Zerol, nice heavy handle and uh, actually uh, yellow to match the bananas. So we're going to take this apple core and uh, let's see, shove it right down the middle of the apple. Works nice and easy, really sharp, and you can see it pop out the other end. And we got that core out right here in there. Pop that out. Now, once again, we're just going to take our knife and slice up the apple. Now, these uh, slices are a lot larger than the man because apples are larger than bananas.
when slicing apples or any other fruit or vegetable, you want to be really careful and not slice your fingers up. Sometimes on the last piece, I won't slice it too much because I don't want to slice my fingers off and it'll be a little bit thicker than the others, but you know what? That's all right. So next, we're just going to, like a deck of cards, you know, we got a, a deck of apples. We're just going to lay these out on the tray very simply and very easily. So we have the apples arranged and that's how they look. This one also took about one third of a tray with just one apple because once again, it takes up a lot more surface area. So the area in the dehydrator can go quickly. If you're wondering which dehydrator to buy of the Excalibur's, they have a four tray, a five tray and a nine tray. You want to check my other videos on YouTube. I have a good video that explains, you know, what's the best size dehydrator for you. Uh, anyways, let's go ahead and put this tray into the Excalibur. Very simple and very easy. Next, we're going to pull out the next tray. And next, we're going to dehydrate the oranges. Yes, I said that we're going to dehydrate the oranges. So you can dehydrate the oranges. You can peel them and then just dehydrate the orange on the inside. And that's really good if you're wanting to eat them. But for decorations and whatnot, I would encourage you to dehydrate the oranges with the skin and all. It's going to look really pretty, actually. So uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to slice off the ends. You don't want to just slice off. You don't want to dehydrate the ends, you know, because it's mostly the, uh, the pith. Although you could do that, and then I would use that for art projects. Uh, this makes great garnish or table decorations, you know, for a holiday dinner, for example. Just like if I cut this off and I was eating it fresh, you know, if you're eating the dehydrated orange, you wouldn't necessarily want to eat, uh, you know, the peel. You would just eat the inside. Uh, you know, this can also be used for like a zest. You could uh, grate off the orange zest and then dehydrate it. So instead of using fresh orange zest, you could use the dehydrated orange zest. So we're down about to the last piece. It's getting kind of thin and I don't, I don't want to cut my fingers off. But uh, I love uh, how the dehydrated oranges look. And that's just the example. We're going to go ahead and uh, put these on the tray. And now a piece like this that has, you know, not a whole lot of orange, a lot of pith, we're not going to even bother with dehydrating that one. So that one looks pretty good. All right, so you can see there, we got the orange on there. That didn't take up too much of the tray. And we're going to slide that back into the dehydrator. So it really is really simple and easy <laughs> to dehydrate. You literally just cut things up, you know, about that, that wide and put it in the dehydrator. I mean, this is not rocket science. The next thing, oh, this is one of my favorite things to dehydrate. It's the onions. You could dehydrate the onions to make like onion rings. You could cut the onions up and then actually bread them up in a batter and then actually dehydrate them and have dehydrated onion rings. Actually, I've had those before and they're absolutely amazing. So for the onions, what you want to do is we're just going to once again slice it up, but you don't want to put the onion skin on there. So first what we're going to do is we're just going to cut off the ends of the onion and peel it just a little bit because once again, you don't really want to dehydrate this little end here either. And we're going to cut off uh, this end as well. And uh, usually when I cut off one end, then you could just take this and peel it down and just take off some of the, uh, the skin, you know, that's not quite edible. Mmm, I can smell that onion. <laughs> and wear swim goggles if you are prone to, you know, tearing up with onions. Another thing you can do that I heard works is uh, cut it underwater. Alright, so there you go. I, I prefer actually dehydrating the, the sweet onions. So like the Walla Walla onions, the Maui onions actually. They have amazing flavor. So check it out. We got this all uh, set up and uh, ready to cut. So once again, guess what we're going to do? We're going to slice it up into small pieces. Real simple, real easy. And you know, on these guys, you don't want to separate them. Trust me, unless you have a lot of extra time on your hands. Uh, you don't want to separate them. These ones will dehydrate fine just like this and they'll still turn out great. <laughs> now dehydrators are often used by gardeners. If you're a home gardener like I am, it's, it's highly worth it to get a dehydrator. Basically, it's another way to preserve food. Many gardeners will like can their food, but I would encourage you to dehydrate your foods. 
when you dehydrate your foods instead of can your foods, you're preserving a lot more of the nutrition than just canning because in canning you need to cook all the foods and in dehydration it's a much slower process. I mean, think about it. Dehydration is a much uh, more natural process than canning because even in the olden days they would sun dry their foods in nature. All right, so we're getting down to the end here. And uh, I think this is the last slice because I don't want to get too thin and, and slice my fingers off here. And you know, if you don't feel comfortable with slicing them really thin, the last slice, you know what? Just put the big slice in. Or even more so, you could take the slice and just slice it up this direction instead. It doesn't all have to be sliced this way. The main thing is you want to just reduce the, the height. So when you're looking at that tray, actually a really good idea to do is when you're looking at the tray of food that you just cut up, you don't want it any higher than if you put another tray on there. I mean, this is just the, the cheating, simple way to do it. So like my cuts are just about as tall as that tray on top, and that's just the perfect height to dehydrate. We go ahead and we'll set this tray over for the next thing we're gonna dehydrate. So let's go ahead and put these onions on there. I mean, a really simple uh, thing to uh, dehydrate onions on are uh, putting a little oil and salt on them. And that'll kind of make like a, an easy onion ring without a, a massive batter. Occasionally what'll happen is these guys will fall out, and that's all right, just uh, put them back in there and they'll still dehydrate fine. Yeah, here's the one that fell out here. <laughs> it's the bullseye onion. All right, so these onions, man, they take up a good uh, portion of space here on the dehydrator tray. I can feel some tears coming on now. <laughs> so you can see there, that's the onion. And uh, you know, it took up a lot of the tray here. Let's see if we could get this uh, back in. I think we go right there. What we're gonna dehydrate next is kale. That's right, you're like, you're gonna dehydrate kale, John? Yes, you can actually dehydrate all your leafy greens, even things like lettuce and arugula and chard, collard greens. You can dehydrate it all. Uh, what's becoming really popular these days is what's called kale chips, but you could also do collard chips and red Russian kale chips and spinach chips. I've even done red variegated sorrel uh, chips. You could dehydrate most actually leafy green vegetables that are edible. So uh, the benefit of dehydrating kale, as you may or may not know, kale is actually one of the most nutrient dense foods on earth according to the ANDI chart that stands for Aggregate Nutrient Density Index. And that's the scale that Whole Foods uses to rate all the foods that they're selling in their store. So you want to eat as high on the nutrient density scale as you possibly can, uh, and kale will help you do just that. So to dehydrate the kale, it's very simple. If you are buying store-bought kale, I would highly encourage you to destem your kale. What happens to the kale if you don't uh, destem it and you dehydrate it? These, uh, the kale stem will literally turn into like a little twig, and if you're trying to eat it whole, that twig could puncture a hole in the roof of your mouth, which has actually happened to me before, and that's not a fun thing to do. So it's very simple to strip your kale leaves off. You're just gonna hold it and try to just get it off in one fall swoop here. And I like to go down until it gets fairly thin, and I'll leave a little bit on there. And then we'll just take that, and then also, you know, you could uh, break that up a little bit more and just put it on. So uh, very important to uh, destem it so that they won't puncture the roof of your mouth like they did mine before. But if you've looked, you know, kale chips in the store, if you've looked to buy them for like two or maybe, maybe three ounces if you're lucky, it's like $6.99 or $7.99. Maybe if they're on sale, they're $5.99, but they're expensive. And you could easily make your own kale chips at home with the Excalibur dehydrator. All right, so we're just laying out our kale there. now. You could see, you're like, hey, John, I thought you said it can't be any thicker than, you know, one tray width. Well, this is curly kale, and curly kale is kind of a, a curly pain when dehydrating. But that's all right, because I'll show you the technique to use to uh, make sure this curly kale is dehydrated properly. So, uh, I mean, it's just really simple, real easy. Just pull off some of the uh, kale leaves and just put them on the dehydrator. Uh, now, the popular thing to do on kale chips is to, you know, once again, batter them up. An easy batter, once again, is oil and salt them. I don't necessarily like that because if you didn't know, oil is 100% fat and just one tablespoon of oil is about 120 calories. So you can definitely pack on the calories and 
pack on the weight if you're using oils. Instead, what I like to do is I like to make a nut-based whole food dressing. So this is a healthy dressing, usually consisting of something like, I don't know, orange juice. You could juice some oranges up and uh, blend them up in your blender with something like macadamia nuts. And that would make a nice uh, dressing that I would use over my salad, but you could also paste that on or actually toss your kale in that mixture and then dehydrate it. And ugh, you've never tasted something so good that's also so healthy. <laughs> Anyways, I think we're done uh, doing the kale and we'll do a couple more leaves here. But I mean, you, it really, the kale takes up a lot of space because actually the leaves are actually pretty large on the tray. So I mean, I think that's about half the tray right there. We just did a few leaves. Sometimes I'll cut them apart a little bit so that they kind of stick down a little bit. And now I'm going to have to come around the front of the dehydrator to put this tray in. So if you have a tray that's, you know, a little bit too wide, you try to put it in like this, it just kind of hits. So what I like to do is I like to pull out the tray above it and then uh, put the tray down. And now these are still in the track. And then I lay the tray down and then I push them in both at the same time. And you know, that gets it in there. The other thing you can do is uh, if you pull that tray out once again, you can just go ahead and take that tray above it out. Now you're gonna get less uh, dehydration space in your dehydrator, but you're gonna be able to push your tray in and it's not gonna touch anything. And you know, that's fine too. Uh, so now we have one more tray left and we have one more item to dehydrate. And what we're gonna dehydrate next has been getting really popular lately and uh, that's mushrooms. You know, there's all these new uh, varieties of mushrooms that are showing up in your local grocery store. Maitake, shiitake, oyster, you know, button mushrooms, portobello mushrooms, so many different kinds of mushrooms. And guess what? If you have too many mushrooms that you didn't end up using and they're gonna go bad, before they go bad, dehydrate them. Actually, a matter of fact, you can do that with every food. If you have food that you bought in the, you know, that's in your fridge that's gonna go bad, before it goes bad, dehydrated and that's going to basically lock in the nutrition right at the point before it went bad so that you'll be able to use it later. So some of the things like if you did plain kale or even plain carrots or the mushrooms, once they're dehydrated they'll save and you could actually use them as seasonings, as a stock for your soup. You could actually rehydrate them in water and blend them up. Like the kale could be like a green powder or a green juice. If you're traveling, you know, you could dehydrate your fruits and vegetables to take them with you on your, on your trip. They're gonna take up a lot less space. So uh, I love dehydrating. It's my favorite way of food preservation, actually. Anyways, back to the mushrooms. Uh, once again, for mushrooms, guess what we're gonna do? We're gonna slice them up, that's right. So you just gotta take the nice knife once again and just slice them up really nice. And we're gonna put these on the tray. Now these can be added to any kind of recipes that you normally add fresh mushrooms to uh, one of the tricks I like to use is once you do have the dehydrated foods, sometimes you want a little bit different texture instead of adding the whole dried thing in. So then what you want to do is you want to soak your dehydrated foods in some water. And the amount of time you need to soak them in water will vary depending on the texture that you desire. If you soak them too long, they're going to be waterlogged. If you soak them just enough, they're not going to be back to the original texture they were because all the dehydrator is really doing is removing the water. And now if you add the water back in, you're putting the water back in. So that's one way that I would encourage actually you to eat your fruits, especially because fruits are high in sugar, especially without the water, you may get more of a uh, blood sugar rush. In any case, uh, that was easily one mushroom cut up and we're gonna then uh, put that on the tray. I mean, this is very simple, anybody could do this. The thing about dehydration is that, you know, you do wanna have some time on your hands. You know, as you can see, cutting up things and whatnot does take a little bit of time but it's definitely rewarding in the end. Because in the end, you're gonna save money on your food bill. Because say you had food that was gonna go bad, you could dehydrate it. So that means that's gonna be more food you could eat later that you didn't have to, you know, rebuy. Another thing about, you know, if you're gardening, I mean, that's where the dehydrator really comes in handy. You could save an immense amount of money by actually dehydrating your crops. One of my favorite things to dehydrate are my peppers and tomatoes. I don't know if you've checked lately, but the sun-dried or dried tomatoes, they sell for like, I don't know, at least 10, maybe 15 or sometimes $20 a pound. And I have bumper crops of tomatoes and I dehydrate them all and jar them up in some mason jars. I use the half gallon mason jars. And you know, they're good throughout the winter and I get to eat them and actually rehydrate them, blend them up into recipes 
like uh, salad dressings I make with the dehydrated tomatoes. And oh, let me tell you, they taste so good. Uh, let's see, let's go ahead and do a couple more mushrooms. I mean, just the two mushrooms hardly filled up anything. Another thing you can dehydrate, of course, is the garlic. People like to dehydrate garlic. You could make your own herbs and seasonings. So you could dehydrate fresh oregano and uh, fresh lavender and make your own mixes and then powder them up and give them as Christmas gifts. I mean, the uses for the dehydrator are endless. It's just so amazing. You could do craft projects in the dehydrator, which are actually outlined in the Preserve It Naturally book. Dehydrators are just plain fun. <laughs> All right, so I think this will be the last mushroom that we're gonna cut up here. Cut them nice and small and just lay these out. So I mean, I think that was about a total of four mushrooms. And I mean, that only took up a small amount of space on our dehydrator rack. Mainly just like a little bit more than two rows. And there they are right there. So let's go ahead and uh, put this in the dehydrator. Let's see, I think we'll put it in this, uh, this one right here. So we're just gonna like, uh, you know, put this above the kale. And uh, what I'm gonna do is because I always like to run my dehydrator as full as possible. So you can always run your dehydrator like half full, but it's better if you fill it all the way because you're paying the same amount of um, money for the electricity that it's using whether it's half full or all the way full. So here's the kale and what we're gonna do is my sandwich technique. So very slow motion, we're just gonna uh, guide this in to where it's supposed to go and then put this in on top. And then, you know, it's kind of wide, then we're gonna lower it down and yeah, it's being crushed, but you know what, just in a few hours, it's no longer gonna be crushed because it's gonna be dehydrated. So once you got all your trays in the dehydrator, very important step, put the door on. <laughs> Then very simply up here on the back, there's a temperature control knob. So next to the temperature control knob is a drying guide and it tells you herbs should be dehydrated at 95, living food should be at 105, uh, raising bread, you could raise breads in here, uh, 110, making yogurt, 115, vegetables are 125, fruits and fruit rolls are 135, meats and fish are 155, and jerky is 155. Now these are only guidelines. For me personally, I like to put everything at 105. If I was doing meat, I would do it at the recommended 155. For fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds, and mushrooms, and things like that, you know, I do it at a lower temperature to preserve more of the nutrition in the food. So we're gonna set this today at 105, and you can hear the dehydrator come on. It's fairly silent, but it does make, you know, small little noise, all you hear is a fan and this will put out a little bit of heat. Actually, I'm feeling a little bit of heat right now. Uh, you know, this can be put in your kitchen. This does actually have a fairly wide footprint, so it does take a fair bit of counter space up. You know, uh, approximately the size of a microwave, maybe a little bit larger than a microwave. So be sure to check your dimensions where you want to place your dehydrator so that it'll fit. But that being said, this does not have to be put in the kitchen. You could put it in a utility room in the basement, in the laundry room. Actually, when I was younger, I put it in the closet when I was renting a home, and I even dehydrated it in the closet <laughs> in my bedroom. And this acted as two purposes. Number one, my roommates wouldn't go in there and eat the food I'm dehydrating. Number two, my roommates were really uh, cheap and they didn't want to spend money to heat the house, so the dehydrator also heated my room. So that was definitely good, and I didn't mind the extra noise. Actually, I found it kind of soothing. Once you put the stuff in, then you're just gonna basically, usually I put it in overnight, and the next day I'll check it out. And usually most things are done by that time. Sometimes I'll take some things out, and some things may need to continue to dehydrate. What we're gonna do through the magic of uh, movie editing, <laughs> we're gonna come back at you and show you the results after they have been dehydrated. Now we're back. These foods were dehydrated overnight, and now we're gonna check out the results. Go ahead and turn the dehydrator off. I have propped up the dehydrator to show you guys what it looks like when you open the dehydrator up. We're gonna come around the front here and uh, take off the door. And uh, so you remember those bananas, the bananas have now turned into the banana chips. So some people put things like sodium metabisulfate and other preservatives in here and other maybe sulfides as a preservative, but you know, I say you don't really need that. The only reason to do that is if you want a nice, pretty appearance of the food. If you don't put that on, you know, it may turn black, may not look so nice, but you know what? It's a natural food. Uh, if you did want to put something on there, you could maybe put some lemon juice on, which will kind of help a little bit 
with the browning, but I don't like to put anything on. Now, the, these banana chips here, you know, they're definitely gonna, if you listen closely, they almost crack and snap. These are a nice, dry consistency. You know, if you don't dehydrate them long enough, they're still gonna be a little bit chewy. These are gonna be kind of halfway in between. They're not gonna be crunchy like the fried ones in the health food store. But you know what? These will definitely stay fresh, and these are great for kids' snacks or even snacks where, when you're hiking or on the airplane or basically any time. Uh, dehydration is an excellent way to get more fruits and vegetables in ya. All right, man. This is my favorite here. These are the oranges. Check out how beautiful these guys look. Once again, if you're gonna eat this, you can eat it just like you would a regular orange. You wouldn't eat the peel, but you'd eat the uh, inside there. These can also be used for decorations, make holiday ornaments or you know garnish uh, plates or dessert. Man, these are just so beautiful. I love the uh, dehydrated oranges. Next, what we're gonna look at is the, oh, the onions. So the onions basically turn into like uh, onion rings here. They basically got dehydrated, they all separated, and that's how they look right there. Imagine seasoning these up to uh, have some uh, raw dehydrated seasoned onion rings. Definitely really good. Once again, you can add these to basically any recipe, such as a casserole soup or even, even your salad, actually. All right, so here are the mushrooms. Man, one of the things that you gotta remember is that when you put food in here and you open the dehydrator for the first time, you can be like, whoa, these things like shrunk. It's like everything in miniature. Well, yeah, when you take out the water, things shrink. So this is like a little slice of the mushroom. And once again, I don't know if you've priced uh, dried mushrooms lately, but it, they're quite expensive. So, you know, the number one reason why I like the dehydrator is because it's gonna save you money in the long run. And with the Excalibur dehydrators, if you buy the 3900 or the 3500 model, it has a 10 year warranty. So you're gonna be guaranteed your dehydrators to be running and saving you money for the next 10 years. Uh, let's see the next one. Oh, the kale chips. So they're still getting stuck on here. Oh, they're right here. Still getting a little bit stuck. And uh, you know, the kale is absolutely a trip. The kale chips, you know, here's the one actually we de-stemmed right here. The stem used to be right here. And I mean, this stuff is like, really brittle. It's almost like if you walk through leaves when you were a kid, you know, I mean, that's what it kind of feels like. I mean, these are just dried leaves, much like, you know, leaves would fall on the ground, but you know, these are edible. And these are a powerhouse of nutrition. So dried kale leaves can be powdered up in the blender or a coffee grinder and make your own green powders. You could season these up, just eat them straight. They crunch when you eat them. Actually, that's a nice flavor. I would always encourage you to purchase organic produce whenever possible. Uh, you know, especially if you're gonna be dehydrating and eating them, so there's no pesticide residues. Of course, you always also wanna wash and prepare your produce for dehydration as well. Mmm, but kale chips, much better than eating potato chips, and actually much healthier. And you could hear that crunch, but I love kale chips the most when they're seasoned up with a batter like I recommended. If you eat all the kale chips, you've just eaten like a whole bunch or even more of kale. I mean, that's some incredible nutrition in the kale. I think actually that's about it. That was the last thing we dehydrated in there. You just saw how easy it is to dehydrate fruits and vegetables and even mushrooms in the Excalibur dehydrator. Now most things are that easy. You literally just wash it, cut it, and put it in the dehydrator and let the dehydrator do its job. I mean, that's what it's there to do. And it'll dehydrate your food and preserve your food so that you can eat healthier. Now that's very important. So besides just dehydrating fruits and vegetables and things like mushrooms, you can also make recipes to put in your dehydrator. One of the most common recipes that people put in the dehydrator is uh, flax crackers. So you take some flax seeds that are rich in omega-3 fatty acids and most Americans are deficient in omega-3 fatty acids. They have too many omega-6s, and there's supposed to be a ratio of three to six for optimal health. So the flax seed crackers are an excellent way to get more omega-3s into your diet. And it's very simple. You take some flax seeds. You could buy those at your local health food store. You wanna just soak the flax seeds in water overnight. Uh, the next morning, you're gonna notice they're just all like stuck together. Then you're gonna get one of the non-stick sheets and take a spatula and spatula out all the uh, flax seeds that are stuck together and then just turn the dehydrator on much like we dehydrated the uh, you know cut up fruits and vegetables today that will harden up and turn into little crackers then you could just take them out and bite them they have a nice crunch you'll be eating healthier 
eating flax seeds that are rich in omega-3s, and man, they're just actually so delicious plain. But if you want to take it to the next level, you could actually cut up uh, you know, vegetables and herbs into there, or even blend up some vegetables and herbs and pour it into the mixture, um, and season them up, and then dehydrate them. So man, flax crackers, one of my favorite things to do with the dehydrator. If you want to learn more about the Excalibur dehydrators, please check my other videos. I have several videos comparing the different models of Excalibur dehydrators, which Excalibur dehydrator to buy, and where I go over specifically the differences between the 2500 or 2900 series and the 3500 or 3900 series. In my opinion, it's definitely worthwhile to get that 35 or 3900 series because once again, you get the book and you get twice the warranty, 10 year warranty, which is actually, I think, the longest warranty in dehydrators today. So anyways, hope you've enjoyed this episode learning more about how to dehydrate fruits and vegetables in the Excalibur dehydrator. My name is John Kohler with Discount Juicers, and we also sell dehydrators.com. Uh, be sure to visit discountjuicers.com slash YouTube for special promotional offers for our YouTube visitors.